Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Now, in this video, I want to talk to you about a fairly underestimated fact about acoustic treatment. And I think it's really important to, to grasp this, to get a feel for it. And that is how much treatment you actually need to hear a difference in your studio. So this is particularly important for you if you are just kind of moving up the professional audio ladder, right? So you got your dedicated room, you've maybe done some basic treatment in there, you've set up your desk and your speakers properly, and you've, you've noticed that something has changed, but you're not really getting that improvement in the way that your mixes translate. And so as you're looking around the room, you, you realize, okay, this has to do with the acoustic treatment, but how much more do you actually need? How much further do you need to take this to get that change to get your mixes to translate? So that's what I want to talk to you about in this video. But before I do that, if you're wondering what, how, how all that fits into the bigger picture of actually treating your studio, I want you to check out my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. These are my five steps to treating a home studio and getting it to translate. So these are all the kind of steps that you need to take in order to go through that treatment process, right? So obviously starting with setting up your desk and your speakers, moving through treatment, moving through measurements, how to think about the difference between absorption and diffusion, when to think about resonance absorption, but also smaller things like speaker decoupling or when the right moment is to tie in a subwoofer. All of this is laid out in there for you as a kind of step-by-step -step process to follow so that you don't end up turning in circles and maybe making changes in your room that you then have to go back and kind of rip out because you maybe forgot an important step that needs to come first, right? So this is the bigger picture, my home studio treatment framework that you can download for free at the link in the description. All right, but so how much treatment do you actually need to hear a difference? Well, the first thing that is really important to understand is that making the room sound different and actually improving the sound from your speakers are not the same thing. This is an important distinction to make. Yes, improving the sound from your speakers will also make your room sound different, but it's not necessarily the other way around, right? So otherwise we'd all just kind of put up heavy curtains or buy some cheap ass pyramid phone. Oh my God. Buy some, some cheap pyramid phone off of Amazon and be done with it. But it's easy to be misled by that assumption. And that is mainly because reducing the reverb time in the room, which is basically what happens in that case, is only a small part of treating a professional audio environment. And also because it's so easy to be satisfied by that improvement that you get, which is only really focused on the mid and kind of mid-high frequencies, yeah? I mean, that's the kind of the band of frequencies that our speech is focused on, our voice operates in, if you will, yeah? And so it's kind of the most, most noticeable, yeah? If you make that change and you get that that dry effect in that frequency band where you speak, you automatically think, oh, wow, the room sounds so much better. Surely this must also improve how I hear my speakers. Now, don't get me wrong, that does have its benefits, but there are, they are marginal at best. When you actually want to improve the sound from your speakers, you need to be more strategic with your treatment. Yeah, so at that, in that case, we're talking mainly about things like damping standing waves, and controlling or, uh, well, yeah, treating reflections and also kind of managing speaker boundary interference effects if they pop up. And in that case, the reduction of reverb time is almost kind of more of a side effect to doing that treatment, to, to putting in that effort and dealing with those particular issues more strategically. Now, having understood that, how much treatment do you actually need? Well, the short answer is it's probably way more than you think both in terms of how much surface area you cover in the room and also how deep the absorption is that you actually kind of employ around the room, yeah? Sometimes you get numbers thrown around kind of like you need to cover about a third or half of the room surfaces with treatment. And that, that is useful to get a grasp, a general grasp of how much you need. But I'm not gonna give you a number like that here and I'll explain why in a minute. 
Instead, I want you to watch the short video series that I did with Music City Acoustics on fully treating their demo room. I'll link it above right now. What we actually did in that series is walk you through that process step by step. And the unique thing that we did in that series is actually to show you how the sound in the room changed with each step of treating the room, all measured with Room EQ Wizard, so you can see that change in data on top of the, the kind of subjective impression that Graham talks about as he demonstrates what we did. That's why in my courses, I always recommend to think about treating the room in batches of three panels at a minimum, right? So you want to start at the most basic with three panels, better six, better even than that, nine or 12, and so on and so forth, yeah? Because that's kind of a, a minimum number that you can use to improve the sound or improve the sound in a way where you actually get a noticeable improvement to the sound from your speakers. Now, if all that sounds like a lot to you, here's the good news. Not everybody needs to take the treatment in their room that far. There are plenty of people out there who do amazing work with just a few basic improvements that they made to their rooms. And it will be the same for you. So you can take that treatment process in steps. That way you can work your way up to the amount of treatment that you need to actually get the improvement that works best for you. So what I want you to take away from this video is to get a feel, to get a grasp for the fact that you probably need to give up a lot more space in your room for treatment than you imagine at this point. Yeah, But also know that you can take it in steps and you don't need to do it all at once. My recommendation is always just get started, right? Do so, a, a, make a basic first effort and then get a feel for what changes and what has improved and also what hasn't changed yet. Yeah, That will give you kind of a benchmark of how much you need in order to work your way up to the, the change that will then give you a system that translates reliably, that gives you that kind of fast pace of work, that the, 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 a mind space where you don't need to think about sound anymore while you work. All right, so I hope that helps and gives you something to think about as you're moving through this treatment process. As always, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.